Hey guys, this is R2D Tech, and there's been a lot of controversy around Huawei in the past few months, specifically because they don't have access to Google services, and whether this means you shouldn't buy their phones anymore in the US or Europe. But that's why I'm making this video today, to give you a better look at the whole situation, and also to show you that there are actually some positives when it comes to Huawei, and in some areas they might actually be ahead of the game, so stay tuned. Okay, so what sparked all of the controversy is that Huawei were actually banned from using Google services as a whole. And that means you don't have access to Google Photos, Google Play Store, Google Maps, or anything of that nature. And of course, it's not just the apps that you lose access to, but also lots of apps which you're familiar with, like Uber or any app that uses Google services for things like Maps, will also not be able to operate normally. Now, of course, it's been made pretty clear by most people that this is a huge deal breaker. And I myself also said this in one of the previous videos. We have to remember that Huawei are a very big company and they're very popular in China, but also now very popular in the US and Europe, especially with their flagship phones like the P40 Pro. What this means is that they do have a huge budget and they are willing to try and sway the market. And it's become very apparent to them that one of the main reasons people aren't buying their phones, especially in Europe or the US, is because of that lack of Google services. When you use their phone, you use Huawei mobile services. And to get apps, instead of using the Play Store because that's not available on Huawei devices, they have a Huawei app gallery which is sort of their own version of the Google Play Store. Now, of course, the problem is that lots of apps are missing from this because most apps mainly run on the Play Store or if you're using iOS on the App Store. While we have tried to address this, so there's over 1.4 million developers who have already put their apps on the Huawei app gallery. The good thing is that since Huawei devices still run MUI, which is actually a skin over Android, all of the apps which are on the Play Store are still compatible with Huawei devices because it does run Android. That means that all developers have to do to put their apps on the Huawei app gallery is simply that, just put their apps on the app gallery. They don't need to redevelop them or anything like that because the phone still runs Android. Now, of course, people are probably thinking, why would developers bother putting their apps on this Huawei app gallery as well? But you have to remember that Huawei have a huge market in other countries like China. Not only that, but in the eyes of a developer, why wouldn't you put your app on a new app gallery, which opens your app up to a larger market? Huawei will obviously be trying to make this happen as well by making any fees very low. So as a developer, it just makes sense to also put your app on this gallery as well as the Play Store. And so lots of apps which currently aren't available on Huawei devices will soon be available on that. Also, more importantly, there is currently an app called More Apps on the Huawei App Gallery. For the time being, this offers quite a nice workaround for the lack of certain apps. So if you download this app, you will still have access to lots of the apps like Instagram and some Google apps as well, which you might have missed out on otherwise. And another feature on this app is actually something called the wish list, where if there is still an app missing, you can just submit an application and Huawei will receive this and try and put that app on their store in the future. So they can get in contact with developers and offer them incentives to put their app on the Huawei app gallery. So now we've got all of that out the way, let's discuss a very major positive to using Huawei services. You're probably very familiar with the idea that Android runs on a vast variety of different phones from different companies. And so when Google put an app on Android, let's say when they put Instagram on the Play Store, this has to be compatible with every single phone from every single company which runs Android. And so what you get is a very generalized version of the app on every phone. It's not specifically tailored to each different company's device. And what that means is say you have a phone from OnePlus or another company 
which has a telephoto lens, an ultra wide, and a very capable high megapixel camera, you won't actually be able to utilize most of that features through other apps like Instagram or Snapchat. What you'll get is when you open the app and you zoom in, it won't actually switch to the telephoto, but it will just use the main sensor and you will lose quality. And likewise, through third party apps on the Play Store, you won't be able to use things like your ultra wide lens. This is because not every Android device has these features like an ultra wide or telephoto lens. And so when Google put the app like Instagram on the Play Store, they didn't make like 10,000 different versions of Instagram so that every device could utilize its specific set of features with that app. They just put a general version of Instagram, which means that you won't be able to use your telephoto or ultra wide. It will just use the main sensor since lots of Android devices only have one main sensor on the back. This is where HMS Android, which is Huawei's mobile services on Huawei devices really kicks in and has an advantage. Since HMS Android is made by Huawei and they also make their Huawei devices, they can make each app which goes on the Huawei app gallery specifically tailored to Huawei phones. So that means that you will be able to use things like the ultra wide or telephoto lens on Instagram and other apps like that. Now it seems the current figure is that over 55,000 apps on the Huawei app gallery have been tailored to Huawei devices so they can use some of Huawei's specific features like their cameras. It's not just software though, but it's also hardware. Huawei also make the chipset in their phone, the Kirin chipset. And so they also have a very good link between hardware and software, kind of like what Apple do with their A13 Bionic chip and iOS. It means that the software can work a lot more efficiently with the hardware. So you get things like better battery efficiency, but also the software can run more efficiently and seem more snappy because it's designed to run with their own chipset. This is contrary to most other Android phones which all use the Snapdragon chipsets and this is not designed to run specifically with their software. So it's been reported that on a Huawei device, the software can seem up to 62% more snappy just because it's working with their in-house Kirin chipset. So it's kind of clear what Huawei are trying to do. They're trying to make their own ecosystem where everything functions a bit more efficiently and a bit better just because it's using a very good combination of their own hardware with their own software. The only problem is that they're not really using their own software even though they're running Huawei mobile services. They're actually still using the base Android software even though they have their own MUI skin over the top. And what this means is there's still gonna be some compatibility issues between their hardware and their software which won't allow efficiency to improve. One company that have really mastered this is Apple. You can see that they only use like three or four gigabytes of RAM and much smaller batteries than other companies like Samsung. And yet their battery life and their efficiency and speed seems very good if not faster. And that's because they make their own chipset, they make their own software and all of the hardware and software works very well together because they can tweak everything in house. This is objectively the very best approach for any smartphone company because if you design everything in house like Apple do, you can tweak everything to work much more efficiently. So you can tweak the hardware and software to work a lot better together. The result of that is you don't need to over spec your phone to get the same performance. So you can spend less money in actually manufacturing the phone and you can charge lower prices and get even better performance than other phones which are much more feature packed. Now behind the scenes Huawei have actually been working on something to compete with Apple's ecosystem and that's using a software which they call Harmony OS. This is a completely separate software from Android. It's actually what they hope to replace Android with on their devices at some point in the future. Of course, they're hesitant to do this because the moment they take this step, they will lose Google services for good. So they'll lose any ability to run things like Google Maps or anything like that. Because in this case, developers will actually have to develop a completely new version of their app to run on Harmony OS. Of course, if Huawei do become big enough and have a big enough user base in Europe and the US, then developers will kind of be forced to redevelop their apps for this new software. 
And I think that's what Huawei are aiming towards in the future, but not quite yet. But just because it's not happening yet, that doesn't mean that we can't get excited and have a look at what Harmony OS might actually be. Huawei have really put a lot of effort in trying to go for the excellent connectivity between all their devices. That means excellent connectivity between their phones, their laptops, their smartwatches, their TVs, and really all of their products. Of course, there's one main barrier at the moment, and that's that their phone runs Android, their TV runs a different software, their smartwatch runs a different software, and so it's very hard to get that ultimate connectivity like Apple have with their ecosystem. The obvious solution to this is to make one software which can run on all their devices, and that's exactly what Harmony OS is. The idea is that the code behind Harmony OS isn't specific to a smartphone, it's compatible with every device that they make, and so if they upload this software onto all of their devices, you get a very interesting scenario where everything is cross-connected and it suddenly becomes very easy to use all the devices as one ecosystem. This is definitely the future and this is definitely what every company is going to work towards at some point. It's very exciting to explore all the different possibilities of a complete ecosystem like this. But for example, what they're aiming towards is a scenario where you can be working on something on your phone and just swipe it onto the TV in front of you or swipe it onto the watch that you're wearing. Another example is if you're trying to film a video on your smartphone, for example, but you want to use the main sensor so you won't be able to see the screen. Obviously, you still want to be able to see what you look like on the viewfinder. So you can just swipe the viewfinder onto the TV in front of you, which also runs Harmony OS. And so there's no sort of thought process that goes into an action like that. You don't need to connect the TV with an HDMI cable and adapter. You just do it instantly. And the same goes for any set of devices that will run Harmony OS. So you can have headphones, speakers, displays, TVs, other smartphones, and you can basically have access to any of those inputs or outputs whenever you want. Let me give you a more relatable example. If you're on a Zoom call and you have 10 people on that one call, Seeing all those 10 people on your smartphone will probably be very difficult. And also the speakers on your smartphone are always subpar. So instead of having to manage all of that on one small smartphone, you can simply swipe some of the people onto a larger TV screen. And instead of having to listen to all of them through your one smartphone, you can set the audio output to a set of speakers which you might have around you, which run Harmony OS. This is the sort of ultimate connectivity which I think is really cool and is gonna be very dominant in the future. Not only will this make viewing content and listening to things on different devices much simpler, but also you'll be able to send files between devices much more easily than you can currently do on Android. But the main point of this video is that even though Huawei are currently banned from Google services, not only are there workarounds to this, but Huawei are actually taking some steps which will put them far ahead of the game in the future. It's becoming clear that with Huawei's in-house production of hardware and software, and the merger of these two together, that in the future, they're gonna be a huge player in the smartphone world. Hopefully this video does shed a bit of a positive light on the whole situation, especially since most of the videos concerning Huawei in the past few months have mainly been negative. <laughs> I hate being, being seen as a bad guy! I hate it so much and I'm tired of it! But that's it for this week. There will be follow-up videos on this whole situation in the future because it is a very interesting topic. But if you did like the video, then be sure to hit that thumbs up button. And if you really liked it and you want to see more content from us in the future, then hit the subscribe button along with the notification bell below.